<laughs> I wasn't done cleaning yet. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Welcome back to Brian Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter, and bloody good times. It's a cleaning video, so sorry guys, it's not going to be a super, super fun one, but uh, it is quite important. So I just wanted to do a quick run-through guide on how to use cleaning products, what cleaning products to use, and when to use them, because when I first started brewing, I was basically just using dish soap to clean all my stuff, and I learned very, very quickly, that is not the way to do things. So. Without further ado, let's get into the three main cleaning chemicals that you use when you're cleaning up your home brewing equipment. Your three main cleaning chemicals are caustic soda, uh, sodium precarbonate, which is not here, so photo, and powdered brewery wash, also known as PBW, which a lot of home brewers use, as well as commercial brewers as well. So kicking off with the first one, let's start with sodium hydroxide. Uh, caustic soda, also known as sodium hydroxide, its chemical name. First disclaimer with this, it is extremely dangerous. So if you are gonna use this particular product, you need to be using big, thick, chemical resistant brewery gloves because regular household cleaning gloves, just look, it's not gonna cut it. This stuff is an extremely strong base. It sits at 13 on the pH scale. So it is very corrosive and very dangerous to use. But that also makes it an extremely powerful cleaning agent because this stuff right here, by the way, used at about 20 grams per liter, will strip all like debris after you've done a big brew day. So if you've got a lot of stuff that's stuck to your kettle after boiling or to your mash tun, or you need to clean out your kegs if you haven't done it in a while, all those sorts of things, this is just gonna rip through all of that organic material and leave it sparkling clean at the end. But the important thing to note is because it is extremely aggressive, it's also very not great to use on soft metals. So especially things like aluminium, brass, and copper, it's gonna slowly start dissolving those metals over time and it's just gonna ruin the quality. So if you've got a lot of copper pieces for any of your brew day stuff, or if you're a distiller and you use copper, don't use this on those products. It is absolutely gonna ruin. Uh, one more note here with the um, sodium hydroxide, when you are using it, also wear a mask, like a, uh, like a nurse's mask, like a COVID mask, because breathing this stuff in will do a lot of damage to your lungs, gets in your eyes, that's big problems as well, so it's even worth using goggles while you're using it. I can't stress enough that, yes, I might be being pedantic here, but it is very unsafe if not treated with respect. Sodium precarbonate, photo here. Um, Look, I don't use it too much anymore. It is a great cleaner. It is significantly less dangerous to work with than sodium hydroxide. Uh, however, look, let's do the pros first. Pros, you can use it in slightly smaller dilution rates and you can also use it to clean a whole bunch of stuff from your kegs to your kettles to your boilers to all your bits and bobs in between. It is very good at removing proteins, yeasts, and things of that nature. It is not, however, so good at removing oils and fatty acids. Uh, and especially because it doesn't have any surfactants, it's not great at sticking to walls. So what I mean by that is if you're trying to clean like a keg or if you're trying to clean a boiler and you don't have a way to have the walls of that metal consistently uh, covered in this cleaning chemical, it's just not gonna clean them because it doesn't like get sudsy, it doesn't foam up. Because of that, it's not good at cleaning stuff if it's not in direct contact. So it means you either need to fill up the entire vessel or you need some way to keep that vessel in full contact with it, like a CIP spray ball, for example. But we'll show you how to use one of those at the end of this video. For kettles, use around 10 grams per liter, so your boiler, your mash tun, that sort of thing. For um, tanks, like fermented tanks, and your kegs, use around five grams a liter. So because sodium precarbonate doesn't have any uh, ability to remove really oily fatty acids, it means if you're only using that, then over time, your fermenter, your boiler, whatever it might be, is gonna start building up kind of a grimy, oily, gross layer on the metal, which is why you need to also use other chemicals to remove the fatty acids. Also, this one sits at 10.5 on the pH scale, so a little bit less dangerous to work with, obviously, than sodium hydroxide. Powdered Brewery Wash, by far one of the most popular cleaning products when it comes to home brewing and commercial brewing in general. This stuff is made in a large part of uh, sodium precarbonate, which is one of the previous ones, obviously. The key point and the key takeaway is that it's got the full power and the cleaning, um, uh, uh, I'm out of words. <laughs> 
It's got the full power and benefits of sodium precarbonate, but it's also got a bunch of other things thrown in that give it surfactants as well. So it can actually cling to walls better and remove uh, debris that's stuck on the sides. It also has products in here that allow it to actually remove oils and fatty acids. So you're gonna strip away all of the proteins, all the yeast products, all that type of stuff, as well as all the hop oils, especially when you're brewing hop heavy beers like West Coast IPAs or Nipahs, very important to be able to strip those oils off. So this thing can be used on pretty much everything. You can use it for kegs, you can use it for cleaning beer lines, you can use it for obviously your boiler, your kettles, your fermenters. It's free rinsing, which means it's a lot easier to remove after you've finished using it. It's um, great with hard water, it's effective at all temperatures. Uh, the other really cool thing about this is that you can use it in different concentrations. So you can use it in lower concentrations for less grimy things. So I actually don't need to remember what concentrations cause it's on the back of the thing. So for spray bottles, scrubbing, beer lines, like a super strong concentrate, go 10 to 15 grams per liter. That's pretty intense for CIP cleaning. Cleaning in place, by the way, if you haven't heard that terminology before, anywhere between two and a half to five grams, and then soaking kettles, fermenters, all that stuff, like overnight, for example, you can use 0.5 to one gram per liter. And there's scoopers in all of these different tubs, by the way, from wherever you buy them from. Generally, the scooper is either a 10 gram scooper or a 20 gram scooper. So just check the packaging or just like weigh it yourself so that you know for sure. So quick two tips, I guess, on how to use these things or make them more effective. These are all slightly interchangeable with length of contact time, temperature that you're using them at, and concentration. So if you use more concentration, you can reduce the contact time and temperature. If you use them for longer, you can reduce the other two. If you use them hotter, you can reduce the other. You get the general idea. So as a rule of thumb, I like to use these things pretty hot. I like using them around 60, 70 degrees after a brew day, and it just really rips through all the grind that you might have either in your kettle or in your kegs or whatever it might be. Uh, one last thing when it comes to the cleaners, these are cleaners, they're incredibly strong. It does mean that you need to actually remove them afterwards and rinsing them off with water isn't enough. After using a cleaning chemical like a sodium hydroxide or whatever it might be, use a sanitizer afterwards to make sure that you've actually removed all of that cleaning chemical from your equipment. So now let's enter the sanitizers. Enter the sanitizers. Often these are acids. So you've got things like phosphoric acid, you've got stellar sand, you've got lactic acid. You can even use good old fashioned ethanol. Smirnoff won't work, but I'll explain what I mean by ethanol in just a second. Phosphoric acid. So key benefits here. One, this is food grade. Phosphoric acid is excellent because it's a non-rinsing agent, which means if you've got sudsy stuff or you're just a bit of residue going on after you finish uh, cleaning your fermenter or after you finish cleaning your kettles or something, for example, it doesn't matter because this stuff can be fully metabolized by yeast and it actually acts as a yeast nutrient in small amounts. You'll also notice that we've used this stuff on a bunch of our brew days to reduce the pH of our sparge water or of our strike water to actually bring it into lines of what we want. So it's food grade, which makes it awesome, and it's a non-rinsing agent. Typically you'd use this at a rate of about one mil per liter, so it's actually incredibly cost effective because you don't need that much. And it's excellent at dissolving things, specifically great at dissolving things like cell walls. So that's why it kills off a bunch of bacteria because it literally makes them explode. So that's awesome. The one thing that's kind of a negative when it comes to phosphoric acid, like in its own concentration like this, is it doesn't foam up. It's not a uh, kind of a, a chemical that can cling to walls. It doesn't have any surfactants in it. So that means, once again, if you don't have a way to coat everything or keep it in constant contact, it's not going to um, do a great job of actually sanitizing those surfaces. So once again, you need like a spray ball or something to keep that surface area contact. Stella Sand. Uh, phosphoric acid's slightly more useful cousin. And honestly, I think any brewer that has been brewing for a while has probably got a bunch of these bottles lying around because it's just, it's the uh, multi-purpose tool of home brewing. This stuff is mostly comprised of phosphoric acid as well. So it's got all those key benefits about destroying cell walls. It's a uh, non-rinsing uh, agent, which means it's safe. It's slightly food grade at low concentrations. So you don't have to worry if you've got sudsy stuff still inside your boiler after you've used it. But the key thing is that it does actually get sudsy. It's got surfactants in this thing, which makes it a foaming agent. And all that foam has longer contact time with surfaces. So it's better at making sure you get a full sanitization 
on all the surfaces that you're trying to sanitize. Typically you'd use this about 1.5 mils a liter and all of these things have like measuring little things on top. So it's pretty easy to just kind of get a rough amount that's mostly okay, like close enough is good enough. And Bob's your uncle. You can also use this by the way to get rust off metals. So if you've got like a piece of steel or something that's got a bit of rust on it, just pour a little bit of this off onto that rust without any dilution. Next day you can come wipe it off and it just takes all the rust off with it. But it is important to point out with both of these sanitizers, wear gloves with any acids in general, lactic acid included, wear gloves because especially when it's in high concentration, it hasn't been diluted yet, it will ruin your skin. And I've still got kind of like rough bits of skin that have not fully healed from the few times that I've kind of been like, ah, gloves, who needs them? Dunked my hands in all the acid and then the next day I'm like, ah, oh, I need them. Yeah. Do you like to party? Let's party. Let's talk ethanol. So this stuff is not gonna work at cleaning anything. The concentration is just simply too low. But if you can get your hands on ethanol at 70% um, ABV, now you're cooking with gas. There is a reason why laboratories everywhere use ethanol as a sanitizer for surfaces. It's evaporative, which is amazing because you can like spray it on surfaces and it starts to just air evaporate. So you're not gonna have drop marks everywhere and you don't have to worry about those surfaces still being wet afterwards. It's, if you're in the distilling game as well, very cheap because you could literally just make it yourself. You could use the waste products on the cups that you don't like from your whiskey runs, distill it at high enough proof, bam, you got your own sanitizing agent. But it is obviously very flammable. So if you're working on open flames, if you're a brewer that uses open flames, be super careful with this stuff in its uh, aerosol spray form because it will just go off like the clappers. So be careful, it is super flammable. Now, the reason why I say 70%, between 70% to 80%, but 70% is its best concentration because that's actually where it is most effective at getting through cell walls. At concentrations closer to 100%, it's actually much less effective at breaking through cell walls, so it's not as effective as a sanitizer to kill off bacteria or wild yeasts or whatever it might be you're trying to deal with. So even if you buy things like Everclear at like 95% alcohol, don't use it at that concentration because it's just not going to be as effective as if you do diluted it down to 70% ABV. A couple other key benefits is if you put it in a spray bottle like this, it's awesome and like squir squirting out your fonts or like your beer taps. So if you've got a bit of sticky kind of residue because you haven't cleaned your beer taps in a while, this stuff will dissolve sugars really easily so you can cut through all that grime and clean up all your beer taps and stuff. And again, food safe, obviously, so you don't have to worry about trying to get all those drops out. It's also really great for just sanitizing like your hands. If you're about to like work with your yeast culture or something and you want to sanitize before you touch it, you can literally just spray your hands, rub it in. It's, it's basically um, hand sanitizer. So it's totally fine and safe to work with. I have my little Apollo snub nose fermenter here by Keg King. The reason I bring this up is because if you are using plastic fermenters and stuff like this, don't use hard bristled brushes, don't use steel, don't use anything that's going to scratch the surface of that plastic. If you make scratches in the surface, over time, little bits of bacteria, wild yeast, fungi, all those sorts of things can live in those tiny microscopic scratches. That over time is gonna start infecting your beer. So unless you're into making real funky sours, that's fine. But if you're trying to make a clean lager or a clean pale ale, your flavors are gonna start to get a little bit strange because you got all those micro scratches in there that are holding all those organic compounds. Do you like balls? Spray balls? <laughs> Spray balls, CIP cleaning, I've lost a tube. Yes, I know this place is a mess. I got way too much stuff going on everywhere, but we wanted to make this video. So CIP clean in place cleaning is basically where you can do a bit of a set and forget. So if you put all your chemicals into your thing that you're trying to clean and then you've got a means to pump said chemicals. What that means is this, for example, will attach to the bottom of the fermenter. This will go into the top of fermenter and keep recirculating those chemicals with the spray ball coating all of those surfaces, which means oh, you don't need any more elbow grease. So if you haven't thought about setting up CIP before, highly recommended because I used to hate getting on hands and knees and like actually scrubbing every surface. You set up something like this, you can clean everything without having to do it manually. However, the kicker about being a home brewer is often you're working with much smaller equipment where a 
pump this size just makes absolutely no sense. It's too much power. So there is a couple little hacks you can use to make it work on a home brewing scale. Enter the low volume CIP spray rotor from Kegland. So this thing is basically just a cheap little 3D printed piece of plastic, but and connected to you know a flexible helix coil. But what it does is mean that you can use basically a big spray ball thing that commercial breweries use on a really, really small scale. So you can just click this into place into your inbuilt pump if you're using something like a Brewzilla. That's gonna pump the cleaning chemicals around and this thing is gonna kick all over the place, spraying it around just like a tiny miniature spray ball. So let's show you how it works. So the way that I like to do my cleaning is basically I've got one big bucket that I'm gonna dump my remaining trub and you know leftover wort into. If you've seen here, there's always like two liters, two and a half liters of dead space at the end of a brew day. So just tip all of that out to start with. Then we're gonna give it a quick hose to try and get off most of the gunk. Tip that out. And then we're basically good to start adding chemicals. So. I'm gonna uh, um, start this one by filling it up with about five liters, then adding uh, Stella Clean Powder, that chemical that we spoke about earlier. Get that up to like 70 degrees, and then I'm gonna start using the um, little CIP sprayer to just get everything and get all this gunk out of the steel. Look, I should be using gloves while I do this. I'm being a bit of a fool, but oh well. So I've got five liters in here, which means I basically want a scoop and a half of this stuff. What is this stuff? This stuff is uh, Stella Clean. So this is that combination of sodium preoxycarbonate, uh, sodium silicate, and ionic surfactants. The surfactants being the thing that makes it cling to the walls to actually help clean it better. Now, I'm gonna pop this lid on. I'm gonna pop this little CIP thing through there. We're gonna start pumping this through. And this means I don't need to do any heavy scrubbing. This is doing the job for me. So I'm gonna run this through with the Stella Clean first, and then I'm going to get all of this out, and I'm gonna run it all over again with um, uh, Stella Sand, because you absolutely wanna run a sanitizer after running something extremely caustic, so that none of this caustic stuff is on your metal the next time you make your next beer. I've now sufficiently cleaned the bejesus out of everything in here uh, while I was waiting on the plate chiller to become available. Now that I no longer need that, I'm going to recirculate uh, this same stuff through the plate chiller into here because I want to give that thing a very good cleaning with, oh my God, I'm going to put gloves on. <laughs> Always wear gloves. Don't take shortcuts. It's not worth it. I mean, the heat is one thing, but the chemicals are another. Just, I should always be wearing big, heavy duty gloves. Uh, okay, I'm gonna connect this up to this, the same way that we basically would if we were actually cooling like beer down, cooling wort down. We're gonna do the same thing here. So, connect that, come on, go tight, nice. I'm gonna pump this first bit out into this here, because this first bit's just gonna be like a lot of hop debris and stuff, which I don't really need going back into all the cleaning solution. But then once it becomes obvious that we're working with chemicals, And I'm pretty sure that is chemicals now. Yep, that's the caustic. Cool. Now I'm gonna pop that in there and keep running it through. I'll probably do this for like 10, 15 minutes or so. Make sure that these plates are super, super sterilized, cleaned out. Then I'm going to get the star sand going in this thing. Uh, may as well point out that whenever I do a double brew day, I recycle the chemicals. You absolutely can. So the baby brewzilla here is finally free to get cleaned up. So I'm literally just gonna pump all the caustics over from the big one into the little one, which will free up the big one to start running star sand. So there's no need to do fresh chemicals for each thing. Like this stuff will rip through stuff as long as it's not completely disgusting, you'll be fine. Come and look how clean she is now. Look, it's just like, I've done zero scrubbing, that's just chemicals. And then all this stuff has just made a nice little clone at the bottom so I can just tip all that out and get on with the stellar sand. Once again, reduce, reuse, recycle. Like, I've just taken the Stella sand from the bucket that I was just doing a little bit of hand scrubbing on a few things earlier. Just 
popped some over into here and then, you know, same thing, rinse and repeat. Stella sand is another one of those things that you can actually keep using again and again until it's like completely gross, as long as you're keeping it right, which is pretty awesome. That's why it works in like, you know, spray bottles and stuff. All right. And away we go. Last tip I'll give you for today. You can make your own really, really easy keg cleaner utilizing a pump, a spray ball, and basically just a cup, bit of tubing to connect your, um, your beer line and your gas line. So sorry guys, this thing does look a little bit grotty, but the way that it works is, if I can just get this out, we've got a submersible pump that sits inside the, uh, in the bucket with the cleaning chemicals. Liquid goes in through here, gets shot out here, as well as through these two tubes here. So all you need to do is grab your keg, open it up, sit it on top of the bucket with a lid cut out something like this. It's gonna rest on top of that. And then it's just gonna get blasted with cleaning chemicals all through the keg, through the beer uh, dip tube, through the, the gas inlet. And then you don't have to do any manual scrubbing, sticking your arm elbow deep up inside the keg. So I would recommend setting up two of these. Do one for PBW, powdered brewery rosh, as we discovered earlier, and do a second one that's your sanitizing agent, like your Stella sand, for example, or your phosphoric acid. That way you're doing all the cleaning as well as cleaning off the cleaning products with the sanitizer. By the way, uh, if you don't want to do DIY stuff, you just can't be bothered, you can buy uh, like bucket blasters and stuff from, uh, from guys like Keg King and from Kegland. They do amazing products and it's just going to save you a bunch of time trying to build something like I did. But I hope you found this video useful. It was, no, it wasn't as exciting as some of the stuff we normally do, but 90% of being a brewer is being a janitor. So if you know how to clean, you can make much better, much tastier beer. Till next time guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next video next week.